troops home. It's, uh, it's been a very long war, as, as everyone knows, Australia's longest. It's been a bit of an on-again, off-again affair. You know, we got distracted in 2003 after initially going into the defeat the Taliban, and we all chuffed off to Iraq, and that didn't turn out so well. In fact, that was a terrible mistake. Um, shouldn't make light of it. Uh, and, but then we came back to Afghanistan and, and in the last few years finally thought through a, a strategy that had some coherence to it. And that strategy's um, generally worked. We've, uh, we've reduced the Taliban's influence in that part of Afghanistan where we've had troops. We've broken down uh, connections with uh, the wider uh, insurgency. We've improved some of the aspects of life for the long-suffering Afghan civilians in Afghan province. 12 years, 260 and, uh, wounded, behind 40 things dead. That we can be proud of. That's Australia's it's been an awful cost. Afghanistan and, uh, tally. I think that was great to hear. I think 26,000 uh, uh, um, Australian uh, troops rotated cost, through the place. It and give uh, and give reverence to it today a lot of things to pick up there what we've left behind the cost i'll try to pick up some of those themes in a moment but uh, something you said that uh, i think was interesting was the distraction of iraq we've heard tony abbott today more or less admit i suppose we can call it an admission that we didn't win we didn't oh, win we didn't lose no. do you think we would have won if not for iraq Oh, look, I think the term win and lose is probably... Those, those terms don't work well in an insurgency. Um, you win and lose, you know, the Second World War, the First World War. Um, you, you don't Pretty win sure Ho Chi Minh won in the Vietnam like War. That was an insurgency. Afghanistan or any other, anywhere else these days, it seems. Um, it's just too complex, too diffuse, uh, too, too corrupt in many ways. And I use that Pretty term, sure America uh, did not win in you know, Iraq. There's corruption that that will remain after we leave. It's just the way things are done. The, it, the, the campaign has been corrupted by the... But, the uh, definition the, of the, winning uh, a war is when you hold uh, the battlefield the Taliban at the end of the day Pakistan and still and the, uh, through the night the and you hold it again the, the next day. By elements of the Pakistani Who holds the battlefield been in Afghanistan? By poor policy, the by Taliban the holds the battlefield um, in uh, Afghanistan. At, at various points. So it's, look, it's been a mess. But almost all of that was predictable, wasn't it? Well, hell yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so Major badly. General Was it just a bad decision in the first place? No, it wasn't a bad decision in the first place, and uh, it's important for your listeners... Oh, yeah, it was predictable that it was going to be a mess, we but it wasn't a bad decision to go right there. In the Fuck first off. place, you recall it was, Wait as a result of the dickhead. terrorist attacks, the airliners being flown into buildings and killing... Uh, 3, innocent yeah, but it wasn't fucking York Afghans that fought the airliners, it was Saudi Arabians and the Jordanians. And the Taliban who it was a fucking civil war in the House of Saud. That's great. As I said earlier, we then sort of almost, almost defeated the Taliban, and had we kept our eye on the ball, who knows where we'd be now. But anyway, we all went to... Um, it's like a shooting a landlord at a pub because there was a Hells Angel uh, living in one room. ...belatedly returned. In the time, though, that we'd been there, and this is also important for your listeners to contemplate. Australian servicemen and women have done the most remarkable job in a really difficult, complex, ambiguous fight to improve the lot of people who really need our help. And, and we, we can't feel any, I believe, national guilt about Afghanistan writ large. We only had troops in a very small part of it, a dangerous, awful part of it, called Aragorn Province. Yeah, in because Oregon, we couldn't fucking restrain Ollie, ourselves from running off better. the wall because Neither America be wanted to yeah, shoot someone. Schools functioning, the roads work, you fucking know, the education system Fucking flat Johnny, the snivelling sort of coward. The judicial system is Just sort of working. Just had to be there. The governor's not a bad bloke. Winston's his the middle name, the poor silly bloke. dodgy, bloke. but at least he runs a, a tight ship. You know, this is about as good as it's going to get. Well, yeah, that's my point, isn't it? Or not my point, my question. Is it as good as it's going to get? Or do we simply regress from here? And if so, what was the point of all that? Well, uh, good, good question. Um, look, this is this may well be a, a sort of an, in, an interim high point because I suspect it's likely there'll be a bit of backsliding once the international security force uh, departs over the next 12 months. I think that's inevitable. Uh, there must be some compromises made with the Taliban. Uh, there must be political compromise with the Taliban. There just can't be any other future for Afghanistan that doesn't involve some sort of embracing of the whole of that. Society. Sure, but we make, we make that compromise. We make that compromise, yeah, then we yeah. leave. We, we'll have to. Um, and then what? I, I suspect things will go backwards a bit. And, oh. and 
and I think all of us Australians, uh, those of us who have had a dog in the fight, those of us who are just concerned about what we've done with our military troops, um, will perhaps see some headlines over the coming years that will cause us to go, oh, gosh, you know, was that really what we, we committed ourselves to and lost those soldiers for? I think we just have to be ready for that. It's a messy, violent um, third world country and, and bad things happen in places like that. And poor old Afghanistanis are stuck in the middle of this. You know, there, there are tribal tensions, criminal elements, a very, very brutal and enforced drug trade, uh, a, a, do a very dodgy government. Uh, elections coming next year, who knows where that'll take us. You've mm. got, as I said, Pakistan sitting, you know, sort of the brooding Pakistan border area causing all sorts of grief. So look, let's, let's not sugarcoat it. It's going to get rough over the next coming years, I'm sure. But we can take some, some comfort, and I take personal comfort, despite the losses that we've, in, we've, in, we've endured, from the fact that while we were there, our Australian men and women did a wonderful job <coughs> and made life a little, a little better for long-suffering Afghan people who needed all the help they could get. And whether it goes backwards, well, we can't really now be accountable for that. John Cantwell, thank you. It's been a great conversation. Thanks, Willie. Major General John Cantwell. He was a commander of Australian forces in Afghanistan until 2010. There are so many issues to explore on that. You just simply can't do justice to in a small issue. But we can keep that conversation going, so your thoughts are very welcome. 0418 minutes. There you go. 12 years. 26,000 Australians went through the place. 260 were wounded. 40 were killed. And now they're coming home with their tails behind them, handed their ass on a plate by a bunch of raggedy ass towel heads who they were trying to laugh at for a dozen years. Join the army, get your head shot off. And don't forget, military veterans have twice the background rate of psychosis and twice the background rate of suicide. They have five times the background rate of being homeless. Combat veterans children have three times the background suicide death rate, 1.8 times the background death rate from accident, and 1.2 times the background death rate from illness. Join any armed force for a partial Darwin Award on enlistment. Full certification is granted when you bury your offspring, or if you get put in a body bag before you get to breed. There you go, that's the... Uh, postscript of the Afghan war by Major General John Cantwell. Ciao.